welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Jasan. I'm a first time mom sharing my experiences with motherhood as well as sharing tips and tricks that worked for me and my baby. Today's video is all about you first time mamas. I'm going to be sharing with you some important things you can do in taking care of your newborn baby. Now we're gonna start with keeping your baby clean and the first part of that will be your baby's mouth. You want to clean your baby's mouth every day to get rid of any milk residue. To do this, you simply use one of your baby's clean washcloths. You get it wet, you wrap it around your finger and you just use it to clean the parts of your baby's tongue that you're able to see. Do not put it too far back in your baby's mouth because it will trigger a gag reflex. If your baby is biting down on your finger, you do not pull it out of the baby's mouth because this will hurt your baby's gums. Clean the tongue, the inner cheeks, and you want to clean around the gums. It is recommended that you use only water to clean your baby's tongue off. However, I am aware that in some countries they do use glycerin. That's up to you as the child's mother. Just consult your doctor or your pharmacist first. Now if you're noticing that while cleaning your baby's tongue, that white layer is not coming off or it looks like it's in a patch or there are different areas of white patches in the inner lips or in the inner cheeks, then your baby might have oral trash and you need to take your baby to see the doctor. Now if you notice that your baby has oral trash, do not beat yourself up. It's not necessarily anything you did. There are several different reasons as to why a baby could have oral trash and I experienced this with my baby as well. And I know there might be some people who would say, oh, you know, you should have been cleaning the baby's tongue. I was cleaning my baby's tongue every single day and out of the blue one day I just noticed about two patches on his tongue and then the next day they came up really, really fast and I knew something was wrong, so I took him to the doctor. I will be posting a video on oral trash eventually. I'll tell you guys about my experience. I'll show you what it looked like in my baby's mouth. I'll tell you how long it took me to get rid of it. Oh boy, it's hard to get rid of. And I'll let you guys know the medications that they gave my baby and the side effects that my baby had to those. So just look out for that. Moving on to cleaning your baby's belly button and umbilical stump. You want to make sure that you're not using rubbing alcohol on your baby's skin. I know in some cultures that's what they do and I know your grandparents might tell you that's the thing to do. Your baby's skin is very, very sensitive. You don't want to put anything on the baby's skin that could be an irritant. And rubbing alcohol is harsh, so you don't want to be putting that on your baby's skin. Just use a cotton swab, get it wet, use it, just clean gently around. If your baby's umbilical stump has not yet fallen off, then you just want to clean around it. Don't pull on it, just let it be. Just clean around it and dry it properly. If it's already fallen off and your baby now has a belly button, especially an innie, then you need to be cleaning that with the same cotton swab and just make sure you dry properly. Ensure you're cleaning behind your baby's ear. I know it seemed like a no-brainer, but you know sometimes as moms, new moms, we get so exhausted and we miss the little things. But ensure you're cleaning behind your baby's ear. This will keep your baby smelling fresh and clean at all times. Just use the baby's wet washcloth, wipe behind the ear and around. Do not put anything in your baby's ear. Make sure you're turning the baby's head and wiping the neck properly. Put the baby's chin up and get this area as well and both sides. Also, you want to make sure you're changing your baby's wet diapers promptly. Don't have the baby sitting in the wet diaper because this will cause diaper rash as well. Here's a little trick I use. Whenever I wash my baby, whether after a pee or a poop, I always oil my baby's bottom and groins. I use an oil that I prefer. I use olive oil or I use the baby oil gel or I'll use Vaseline. This prevents the pee from sitting on the baby's skin and prevents diaper rash from happening. Let's talk about your baby's pees and poops. It is important that you monitor how frequently your baby is having a bowel movement, the color of the bowel movement, how many wet diapers you're changing, and the color and odor of your baby's pee. So your baby should be having 
between six to eight wet diapers within 24 hours. The baby's urine should be straw yellow, very clear yellow, or no color, and it should not have a strong odor to it. Your baby's bowel movements, however, a newborn will have what's called a meconium stool, and this is just a really, really dark green stool, almost black. It's tar-like and pasty. The first few days of life, this is what your baby's poop will look like. After the first week of life, when your baby passes the meconium stool, going forward, your baby's poop should never be red, should never be clay, which is a white color, it should never be black. If this is happening, you need to take your baby to see the doctor. And don't worry, once you give birth to your baby, your nurses will tell you everything you need to know about monitoring your baby's pees and poops. Next, you want to always make sure you're burping your baby. Now, some people think if they're breastfeeding, they don't have to burp the baby, but you have to burp the baby regardless. While your baby is sucking the milk, your baby is also sucking in some air. So when the baby is done feeding, you want to make sure your baby is not going to sleep immediately after eating. Hold the baby up and help the baby by patting the back or gently rubbing the back. By doing this, you help your baby to release air bubbles. Air bubbles that are not released could get trapped and cause your baby to have gas pains. So you're going to have a fussy baby on your hand. Make sure you're turning your baby's head. A newborn up to two or three months are not able to turn their head on their own. So you want to make sure you're doing this for your baby. If the baby was laying on the back of the head before, then you want to transition to the side and then to the other side. This will prevent your baby from developing flat head syndrome. Also called positional plagiocephaly. Ensure that your baby is never too hot or too cold. Babies are not able to thermoregulate their own bodies, so make sure that your newborn is wearing socks and hat at all times. Do not place your baby's crib or bassinet close to the window. You can put a room thermometer in your baby's room, or if you feel like your baby is hot or cold, you can use a thermometer and check your baby's temperature. A general rule of thumb, if you're feeling hot or if you're feeling cold, that's what your baby's feeling. So if you're in the house and you're feeling cold, put an extra layer of clothing on the baby. If you're feeling hot, then you might want to remove the baby's clothing or turn a fan on or some air condition, whatever you can do to cool your baby down. Either way, you want to be in the middle, not too hot and not too cold. Now, if you're bottle feeding, you want to make sure that you're sterilizing your baby's bottle, nipple, pacifier, anything that comes in contact with your baby's mouth, guys, you need to be sterilizing at least once per day. You can boil them in a pot of water just on your stove if you don't have a bottle sterilizer. I have a bottle sterilizer. I use the Tommy Tippy. I'll put a picture of it on the screen. It holds six bottles and on the top it has a tray where you can put all the nipples, the bottle covers, the pacifiers, stuff like that. It's also really easy to use. You just put some water in and press the button. Five minutes later everything's sterilized. So you can do that or you can boil them on your stove. Either way, that sterilizes them. If you're breastfeeding, you want to ensure that you're cleaning your breast and your nipple before feeding your baby at all times. This will eliminate any potential transfer of germs to your baby. Your baby's crib or bassinet should not have any toys or excess blankets. These are hazards for your baby. You want to protect your baby from SIDS. If you don't know what SIDS stands for, it's for Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. So just be cautious of what's in your baby's surrounding. Keep the baby close to you when the baby is very small. Whether you're going to be keeping the bassinet beside your bed in your master bedroom or you're going to be putting the baby in the crib in the baby's room and stay in that room with the baby. Now the last thing I have for you guys is ensure you're feeding your baby on cues. Cues are signs that your baby show when they're hungry. So this could be anything from licking the lips to this sound. The baby will open the mouth and turning its head everywhere looking for food. If you pick the baby up, the baby will turn its head to your chest. The baby will be clenching the fist over the chest. Now that's it for today's video guys. I wanted the video to be short and sweet. If you enjoyed the content and if you find my tips helpful, then go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section and give me a like. 
If you want to see more videos like these, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys next week.